We are bound by our heritage to a set of common values, hard work, integrity, responsibility. Bob Dole was the very embodiment of those values, a man who rose from humble beginnings to become one of the most powerful people in the United States. Part of what makes me so proud to be an American is a constant effort of our people to do better, to make our country right and good and just. They were his values. There's no doubt about it. Tom Daschle was Senate Democratic leader when Bob Dole led the Senate Republicans. I can't tell you the number of times I was next to Bob Dole and I'd look over and he was tearing up because somebody had said something that reflected one of those values. And that emotional level of commitment was always there, always very apparent. Robert Joseph Dole was born in 1923 to a struggling family in rural Russell, Kansas. He was a high school athlete who wanted to be a doctor, but World War II intervened. Advancing against German fortification, I'd been hit with something that shredded my right shoulder, paralyzed me from the neck down, and disfigured my 21-year-old frame. He lay on the battlefield for 10 hours. But Bob Dole's wife, Senator Elizabeth Dole, says her husband was never bitter about his wounds. Let me share with you what happened when we were visiting my parents in North Carolina. Bob left his bedroom, and he had a towel over his shoulder that had been crushed. He walked up to my mother and he said, Mrs. Hanford, I think you should see my problem. And she said, Bob, that is not a problem. It's a badge of honor. Earlier this Bob? year, Bob Dole told me that he recovered with moral and financial support from his hometown, symbolized by this cigar box. My friends in Dawson Drugstore in Russell, Kansas, when I heard that I was wounded, they passed the box around and kept it on the counter and asked people to give money. He never forgot that generosity. If I have done anything, it's because of people I have known up and down Main Street, and I can recall the time when, when I needed help, uh, the people of Russell helped. And I think... Dole, who won two Purple Hearts and a Bronze Star, decided on a career in public service while still recovering from his wounds. I figured out that lying in bed the rest of my life was not an option. Bob Dole got a law degree and plunged into politics. He was elected to the Kansas State Legislature, then the U.S. House of Representatives. In 1968, he won a Senate seat and soon became chair of the Republican National Committee. But Americans really got to know him in 1976. I'm extremely proud to introduce to you Senator Bob Dole of the great state of Kansas as my running mate for victory in 1976. Bob. The Gerald Ford Bob Dole ticket would lose to Jimmy Carter and Walter Mondale. Dole tried to capitalize on his name recognition by running in the 1980 Republican primaries. He lost the nomination to Ronald Reagan and then in 1988 to Vice President George Bush. And I have been beaten before and no doubt will again. But I have never been defeated and never will be. So. Dole did win a key race in the Senate in 1984, becoming Republican leader. The final vote, 28 to 25. Outgoing Majority Leader Howard Baker officially introducing the winner. Congratulations, Bob. Senator Dole was a mainstream Republican, advocating for lower taxes and smaller government. But he also supported civil and disability rights. And he was proudly a deal maker. I do work hard, and I get along with a lot of people on both sides of the aisle. He prided himself on figuring out compromises. Yet today, compromise has almost become like a dirty word. Nobody wants to admit they compromise. 
Well, I think you're absolutely right, Rita, that today compromise is viewed as capitulation. But Bob Dole knew one thing, that compromise is the oxygen of democracy. And Bob Dole knew that to his heart, to his soul, to his very being. Dole had one daughter, Robin, with his first wife. He and his second wife, Elizabeth, who served as a cabinet secretary and senator from North Carolina, were one of Washington's most glamorous and popular couples, with Bob Dole known for his self-deprecating humor, like when his official Senate portrait was hung. And some of my colleagues have been waiting for years to nail me to the wall. So. <laughs> And he had a pension for speaking of himself in the third person. All roads lead to Iowa as far as Bob Dole is concerned. He'd be back in Iowa in 1996, running for president yet again. He even gave up his Senate seat to campaign full time after he finally clinched his party's nomination. Tonight I stand before you, tested by adversity, made sensitive by hardship, a fighter by principle, and the most optimistic man in America. He waged a fierce campaign against Bill Clinton, but Dole always made one thing clear. And he is my opponent, not my enemy. President Bob Dole lost in a landslide, but quickly rallied. Bob Dole is a fighter. You can't hold him down. <laughs> He's going to bounce back. Bob Dole. Bob. <laughs> The third day after he had lost the election, he goes on the Dave Letterman show. Bob, what have you been doing lately? Not, <laughs> uh, apparently not enough, but in any event. <laughs> and shortly after defeating Dole, Bill Clinton invited him to the White House and made this announcement. I am pleased to be able to recognize Bob Dole's record of achievement with the highest honor our nation can bestow on a citizen, the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Clinton also asked Bob Dole to lead the effort to build the National World War II Memorial. Dole would help raise some $170 million in private funds, and he'd frequently show up there to greet fellow World War II vets. My pledge one time was to make a difference in the life of at least one person every day. Now, I've probably failed in part of that, but I still work at it. In 2018, Democrats and Republicans alike voted to make him one of only eight senators in history to receive the Congressional Gold Medal. He accepted the award with his typical humor. I want to thank all of those who have said such kind words about me. They're probably not true, but they were nice. <laughs> but perhaps most indelible was this scene later that year. Senator Dole standing to salute President George H.W. Bush's casket in the U.S. Capitol. A tribute from one World War II vet to another and a reminder of Bob Dole's dedication to his country.